guys, it's Derek here at Farpoint Farms. Check it out. I figured it was time to make a follow-up to this. This is the Chaoyang LC90. I put a video out a couple months ago on this radio, and I felt like so much has changed about this radio, it was kind of time to do a follow-up. When I put this radio out, when I put the video, the first video on this radio out, I said it was the best radio I had ever reviewed. And I got a lot of hate for that, which was kind of surprising. I don't normally get crappy comments, I would say, but there were a lot of grouchy people that were making some uh, their own opinions. Of course, none of them actually owned the radio, but a lot of them had their own opinions, and that's fine. What surprised me, I guess, the most was that they didn't understand why I felt that this was the greatest radio that I had ever reviewed. And so I want to go through that. They also had some shortcomings that they were pointing out. Now, for 90%, maybe 95% of the population, a shortwave radio doesn't have to have sideband, doesn't need to have sideband because they're not listening to ham radio transmissions, they're listening to shortwave or AM or FM transmissions, or longwave, I guess, would be in there too. The, uh, that was one of the big complaints. Now, I understand that here on my channel, I have a lot of CB and ham radio and GMRS radio users, and of course, shortwave is a great thing to have for them too, but they do love to listen to ham radio conversations, CB radio conversations, stuff that are broadcast in lower sideband or upper sideband as well. I get it. I have plenty of radios that have that too. So that was a, a valid complaint. Well, I'm going to double down, so to speak, and I'm going to say that I went out and bought a second one at my own expense because some of the comments there were that, oh, you know, you just do these reviews and you'll say whatever they tell you to say, which is not true. In fact, the folks that own these radios, um, you know, I've spoken to actually the owner after the fact of producing the video and they were very happy that I had nice things to say about it, but at no time did they ever tell me what they wanted me to talk about or how they felt I should portray these. Anytime I get sent a product, it's because somebody wants me to show it off to the world. It's not so much a commercial as it's just a introduction. Companies that are as small as this one here, they can't afford to actually advertise, so they'll send a product like this to people like me, and there's several other YouTubers that they've done this for, and they'll let us play with it. Some YouTubers might review this product here and not like it. That's their opinion, that's theirs. For me, this was a great radio, so much so, like I said, that I bought a second one at my own expense. The thing I want to talk to you uh, tonight about these radios and the reason I'm making this follow-up video isn't about any of that, isn't about the hate, isn't about any of that crap. It's actually about the uh, incredible updates that these radios have received. They have come a long way. So the first complaint that a lot of people had with these was that they did not have sideband, and that was a deal breaker, especially since the radio is kind of expensive. I mean, at the time that I bought this one, it was $249 with free shipping on Amazon. That ain't cheap, I will agree. Certainly, it's, uh, you know, you get onto the Eton Elite 750, which I have. I paid um, less than that for it because I got it used. Uh, however, new, those things are almost $500, and those radios lack a lot of features that this radio has. Well, one of the first updates, so when these first came out, I think I had version 4.1. One of the first updates they came out with was to add full general coverage. So instead of just the uh, AM and medium wave and long wave and short wave bands, they added general coverage. So, um, you know, all the way down from like 100 all the way up to 30, mega, or 30 yeah, megahertz. And so it is full coverage now. Another update they came up with, and it's incredible to me, not being an engineer, not being the most technical individual that ever lived, that they can do this through software, but they also added lower and upper sideband functionality to this, and it works pretty well. I'll go into some of the features that they've, you know, upgraded this into. And so for, for me, like, that was just, that's when I went out and bought this, because um, I was like, wow, that's really cool. This one stays up here at the studio, and this one now lives by the bed. For me, though, the reason that I said this is the greatest radio I've ever reviewed is the fact that it does all that, but it also does internet-based radio. And a lot of the comments that I got at the time were saying, well, yeah, my cell phone can do that, or a cheap laptop can do that, or whatever. Yeah, they can, but they're not radios. This is a radio. It acts like a radio. It changes channels like a radio. It does everything like a radio. And if I wanted to play on a laptop or a cell phone, I would play with those. But I want to listen to radio on the radio, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. So maybe that's a difference of opinions between me and you know, those who were commenting that they did not 
think that it was worth it to have something that, that uh, had internet radio when there were so many other ways of getting it. Some of the other cool updates that they've come out with is now they have voice search. Now I'll be honest and say that voice search on this thing is it's hit or miss. Uh, maybe it's because I have a kind of an unusual dialect. Also I'm hard of hearing, so I don't know that I speak proper enunciation at all times, especially when I'm talking to a machine. But sometimes it will find exactly what I'm looking for, and other times it'll come up with anything but. So that can be kind of hit or miss on that. But again, through software, they were able to add voice search, which I think is really nifty. Now, there were some other complaints about um, medium wave or, or, or terrestrial AM, as I call it here on this channel, uh, not being very good. And I said in my review, in my initial review, that, that it isn't. It's not all that great. With a long wire antenna, you can improve that some. But I will say, and, and I think when I made this video, I pointed this out, but perhaps people didn't hear it, apparently. I have no reception on AM here at all. So if I have um, the best antenna, which I have, which is the MLR30, if I have that hooked up to a really sensitive radio, sometimes I can get a very, and I mean very weak signal on one or two stations here. But you have to crank the volume all the way up and daytime only that's not doing too well. Now at nighttime, it's a different story. When I filmed this video, the original video on these, uh, I was doing it during the daytime or in the early evening, but daylight hour. So clear channels hadn't kicked up and uh, we were just looking at AM stations. So the fact that I didn't pick up anything wasn't all that spectacular. I will say after spending a lot of time with both these, that AM is just not really a very good, it's not great, it's not great. So I don't pick up hardly anything even at night unless I have a long wire antenna hooked to it. So clear channels even at night are a little bit iffy on this thing. They're just, just not one of its stronger points. But shortwave, uh, and I think I showed a lot of clips, uh, I thought enough clips of me showing off some of the stations that I picked up on shortwave. And when I made this original video on it, I was so focused and so interested myself in the internet side of things. Maybe I didn't focus enough on it, but I picked up all the major players and a couple of weaker stations, so I found the shortwave reception on this to be fine. There were some complaints online about something called birdies. I don't know what they're talking about. I've not had any issues with that on this. However, these are now both updated to uh, version 4.4 or 4.5. I can't remember what they're up to now. And apparently, according to their website, they have cured the birdie issue, whatever that was at some point. And so that is gone as well. Any other things I could say about this before we get into the changes that have been made to it via software are that I do agree with some of the people who said the, uh, the antenna connection is in kind of a weird spot. It's over here. It's kind of close to the tuning dial. And uh, that is kind of a, a weird spot to have. But I've just overcome that by just using an alligator clip. When I want to listen to an external antenna, I just alligator clip it right there. Earphone jack, though, it's fine. I don't find it to be in the way. And I do listen to this probably more on earphones than on anything else. Batteries seem to hold up extremely well. I fell asleep multiple times with this thing on. Wake up in the morning and it's still on and it's still running. So that's been pretty cool. And uh, like I said, for me, mainly the, the features that I love the most about it are the internet stations. The fact that you can also add in favorites for, like, I find an internet station that's, uh, and when I say internet stations, I think people think of Shoutcast, which is what I think of, or uh, Live 365, those kind of places. And those are kind of in here as well. But they also have streams of AM and FM stations here in the U.S. and across the world. So what I've found is, you know, the lack of, reception uh, on AM stations here, unless it's late at night with the clear channels, is easily overcome for me by being able to listen to stations that I would never be able to get. There are a couple of great independent AM stations still in operation, and, uh, and these are able to get it. So I've got a bunch of those saved in the uh, favorites file, a couple of FM stations around here as well, but a lot of internet, a lot of shortwave stuff. So the fact that your favorites or your saved stations can be a mixture of all of those modes is also kind of cool. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to get the camera closer in. We'll go through these some of the new features and functions this has. But I will say that uh, overall, what has it been, four months, five months of ownership? And, and the fact that I went out and bought a second one probably shows you all you need to know about what I think of the Chow Young LC90. I hope that they come out with some something smaller than this. But I also would love to see an old school conventional countertop radio, you know, something like the Radio Shack DX300, 302, 394, something that is, you know, I wouldn't say rack mountable, but something that you can put 
onto this thing was you know tippy if i were going to change anything about the design of this i would have added one of those little those little things so you can lean it like so you know what i mean the little like uh stands kickstands for it because it's not really set up for home use it's set up you know as a portable radio because that's what it is it is shocking to me how crazy amount of stuff they were able to dump into this radio um, the other thing that it does and i don't i, I don't do this because we don't have cell reception at the house anyway people were saying what good is an internet radio if you're um, away from wi-fi and I, I think maybe i didn't go over it in the first video but it does have a tiff card tif and not tiff card a um, what do they call that a sim card i'm sorry that's how much i know about cell phones it has a sim card slot so you can take the sim card out of your cell phone put it in this thing and there's your wi-fi or your your internet signals coming through there or you could even get a SIM card specifically for it if you wanted to, which would be cool if you were at the beach or camping or hunting or something like that and you wanted to be able to listen to all the stations that they have to offer. That's certainly a way to do it. All right, well, I'm going to get the camera closer in. We'll get a, uh, go through some of those new features and functions, lower sideband, that kind of stuff, and that will wrap it up. But overall, i got to say, you know, four-month long-term review. I felt this, this particular radio deserved that uh, because of how much... Uh, love and hate I guess it got on the original video that it was time for a follow-up that it was worthy of a follow-up and uh, yeah well let me show you at the bench all right well let's go through some of the new features I'm not going to do the whole band scan thing with you like I did last time just want to show you some of the updates uh, backlighting I'm going to change that for the sake of us to always you can change this to mid-wave I've already done that to 10 kilohertz and that's so for you know here in the US all right, so here we are, familiar splash screen here. We of course have our um, we have our regular stuff here. So if I go into that, oh, we'll go into America. We can pick a state. Look at there, we are in North Carolina. It's geolocated us. Video game radio, interesting. So we have that there. Just like before, if you like something, you press that button there, and we be, we get it. We can favorite that and go back to our favorites list. If you want to just scroll through, and this is why this is better than any app, right? If I want to scroll through, I simply roll, wait for it to load. Now some of these channels aren't online all the time. There we go. And so you can do that. Just give it a second to update. Now I'm 400 feet from the house, so it is taking a little while for the signal to make its way up here. Pretty cool, right? All right, so let's get out of that. I know uh, some of the features that you guys will care about. If I'm going to get out of this. How do I get out of this here? We'll go with... Uh, we can get into uh, FM mode here. Digital environments did a great job of, especially if they're... Midwave, which is now set up for... And Midwave has changed. We can also go from indoor to outdoor. So indoor, you're going to be using the internal ferrite rod. Outdoor means it wants you to use that longer antenna. So those are just some changes that happen there. And then we go over to shortwave. And we have choices. There's lower sideband. So press once, upper sideband, lower sideband, press again. We're back to the AM side of things. And we're into the ham bands here. So you can see full coverage, right? If I, um, if I roll through. There's the CB band. Well, that's not, but we're getting close to it. And you can see full, full coverage now, which a lot of people were complaining about. But, you know, and I'll be honest with you on that. Like, I'm, I'm cool with that. That's always nice to have access to everything. Um, when you're talking about a, a shortwave radio, it's not really... A, that's a general coverage receiver. This was sold originally as a shortwave radio. But now we have general coverage receiver. And I'll turn this down some, but you can again, you press and hold. And we can switch over to upper side band, press again. We're into lower side band, and then press again. We're back over to regular AM mode. So 
pretty cool that they've added those features there. Uh, there is uh, some other stuff. If you press and hold language, long press the language key and start speaking. So I could punch in something. North Carolina radio. Right? And it brings it right up. So I could be laying in bed and just long press that and find and find what I want. Which is really cool. I actually really like that feature. And it, I, I don't, like, so there's so many things here. It's funny where you're, where you look at a radio and you're like, I like it. I like it. And again, I'm going to be honest with you. To me, right? This is not the best shortwave radio I've ever reviewed. It's not the best AM radio I've ever reviewed. It is the best radio I've ever reviewed because of this. Because of this part of it. I wanted a radio that does it all. And this is the only radio that I've ever come across that does it all. And now it does even more. It does shortwave on all the bands, all the way through the ham bands, it does lower sideband, upper sideband. It still has the internet radio portion. It still has AM, it still has FM. It can play Bluetooth speaker. It can play the TF card and listen to music through that. I mean, it's pretty darn cool. Now, there is some stuff that I had, didn't go over in the other video I'll hit real quickly. And that is, I think in my first video, I, I you know, still getting to know the radio. So I'm, I'm you know, volumes over here. I'm going through this, but if I wanted something, I was pressing OK. So I was going from here to here. Didn't realize that that does stuff too. You press it again, it goes back. This is the fine tuning, right? If I want to go single digits, and if I press that, well, now I can change my bandwidth. I'd probably stick it with three right there. And volume, volume is just volume. Okay, so those are some buttons I did not talk to you about. If you want to long press this, it's going to bring up our list of channels, but unfortunately we haven't added any here yet. So that, that's why that doesn't come up with anything. But you do have a clock mode, you do have a lock mode, and of course direct keypad entry. So yeah, this is just a cool little radio. Got a lot of hate. Got a lot of hate. Be honest with you, first video I ever put out that... Uh, well, not since the first year I was making videos here on YouTube that got a bunch of uh, what I like to call point dexters out there arguing their point. It's great. I'm glad you guys have your own opinion. In my opinion, this is the best radio I've ever reviewed, and I've talked to you about why. And I've talked to you about this software update making it an even better radio. And I like that. Is it the highest reception you're going to get out of a radio? No. Is it the most sensitive receiver you're ever going to get? No. Did I say it was? Nope. A lot of people read a lot into my original video, and I was, you know, I thought it was kind of comical after a while, although. So you believe what you want to believe, my friends. I own one, and now I went out with my own money and bought a second one. I think that says something about this radio. Pretty cool. Anyway, that'll do it for today, my friends. I will see you next time. Take care.